Good day everybody and welcome to my studio. I'm going to do another from start to finish resin painting for the newbies, for the beginners. So I'm going to go through this very, very quickly. So what I'm doing now is I'm just testing my canvas to see how, how uh, tight it is. And it's actually not too bad and I'm still going to put these inside um, these wedges because I want to tighten it a little bit but not too much you got to it's got to have a little bit of flexibility sometimes you got to push them in and you'll find um, that sometimes they are different sizes some are smaller and some are a little bit thicker so if you find one that won't fit you, you um, just shuffle through them and then get a thinner one. It happens sometimes. I just thought I was losing my mind one day as I was trying to fit it in and it just would not fit. And then I found another one that fitted beautifully. Okay, so I'm just going to go around and do all that and then I'm going to take this. Okay, so that took about 30 seconds. That's all done. And so now... It, um, it feels nice and tight but this it still has a little bit of give in there so now I'm going to just go around and tape the sides okay, this is just a masking tape somebody commented on you know in, in one of the um, videos that um, she uses uh, she just uh, double tapes everything and it really helps so that's a good tip um, I find that it works for me if I just um, really push push the tape right in just on the edges where it's most crucial so it doesn't sneak in there so I'm just going to go around and do that on all these um, other edges Okay, so now that is done. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some push pins in the corners or the sides. And the reason why I do that is not to lift it off my table, but to lift it off uh, these cups. So if I sit it on this cup, um, often when the resin slides down off your canvas it, it it gathers in in this top here and it becomes a little pull and then your your canvas is sitting on on top of that and it's really hard to take it off even with the tape on so when i do it this way and then i sit my um elevated canvas on top of it it's got room to move and it's not sitting in that and the reason why I don't just do it on the ground is on the ground on the table it's because there's not enough room for it to to allow that movement because you'll find that these the little droplets they can stretch and then you get stuck onto your table and then when you go to lift it up it lifts the whole plastic up and everything okay so that's why i do that so i'm just going to go ahead and do them all around okay now that i have that ready they're all in these are nice and flat so it should be nice and stable but i'm going to use my oh that's got to be lifted so it's got to be lifted there. So there's two ways I can do that. I can just probably push these push pins down. What I can do is just press on here. And that'll go down. And now that is just too much. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know my own strength sometimes. I'm just going to go a little bit here. Okay. So that's just to level it out a little bit. This one's a bit hard to push that way, so I might have to just push it a little bit this way. You can use a little hammer. OK. 
okay this one needs to be lifted so that one let's just have a look at this way this way perfect that way this needs to be pushed actually no it's good it's good perfect okay i have my little um toolbox i guess you can call it just wanted to show you everything i have in here i've got my torches and i've got some of my palette knives knives different sizes and types of stick stirring sticks tiny little ones even for picking up pigments it's it's handy a few cups just as a as a backup some and these are just samples that I was given from a, um, I think it was a, a, a paint company. They gave me some samples, so they're perfect for scraping or swiping or whatever. And what else have I got in here? I've got this little um, container here where I can keep some pens, you know, few little bits and pieces that I might use it seems to get fuller and fuller and then I have to go and sort it out and get some out <laughs> that I don't really need okay so that's that it's good to have them handy in one spot so you can just grab that and you go ahead and do your do your thing now I have to check this again because I'm not sure which way I had it turned but that's perfect all right let's start mixing okay we're ready to start mixing now so I've got my sharpie and I'm estimating for this 30 by 40 canvas I'm gonna need this full cup so that's about to here one part okay so that should fill it up to the top we'll, we'll see how we go so that's how I do it I, I used to measure um, I used to weigh the 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 resin um, but this particular one I always had left over um, not the hard no. oh sorry okay I, I guess it depends on the um, resin that you're using uh, some resins you can weigh and get an accurate measurement that way I thought it was an easy way to do it that way with my resin but that I always had some leftover resin um, and uh, use up all my hardener before I use up the resin so um, I don't do it that way now uh, I just do it this way you can use a measuring cup I just don't see the point in doing that because I tend to um, waste waste the money buying measuring cups because they do get destroyed you know all right here we go so um one part sorry hardener goes in first because hardener is the one part one so here we go i'm just going to go up to that line accurately measured always have some alcohol wipes handy just to wipe that lip or the rim whatever you want to call it just so it stays nice and clean and you don't get those dry bits and so now I've got my uh, one part in here which is my hardener this is two to one ratio so one part hardener two parts of the epoxy so that went in there now now I have to do is measure my epoxy so two of these off I go up to the line and you find that your resin is always a little bit thinner then oh sorry your hardener is always a bit thinner than your epoxy resin <coughs> and then in I go They're usually labelled as part A and part B. So it's it's um it's a good 
good thing to mark your your lids with A or B. Oh, I'm running out of this one. I'm just going to have to make sure there will be enough. It's just going to take a little while for it all to come out. So I'll just sit it here and wait a little bit. Okay, so that's the last drop in there and that was pretty good. And then I'm going to add that into my other bits and scrape as much as I can and then give this a very, very good stir. When you're stirring, just do it nice and slow. You want to mix it really well, but you don't want to, you know, create too many bubbles because um, it's just harder to manage. It's harder to, to get rid of them. So it's best if you, you always get bubbles, but it's best to not have too many. And because today is a cooler day, um, it's going to take a little bit longer for it to mix in properly. Um, and I'll, good thing is I'll have um, a little bit extra time to work with it because when it's warm, um, resin warms up um, quicker and as it's gradually heating up, it will um, start the curing process and it'll uh, start setting so you don't have as long to work with it. So what we're looking for is, you won't be able to see it um, in the camera, but you want it to be clear with no, no streaks, no stringy bits and I still have them and it's not looking as clear so I'll keep going like this until it's all ready okay so now that that's all mixed I still can use this cup so what I'll do is I'm going to pour some of this in here and then pick up all of those um, bits of resin and the hardener off the sides Oops, it's just a little bit sticky there. So I can see a few little stringy bits floating about and that's because I'm picking up uh, unmixed resin. But I want to be able to use this cup again and that's why um, I'm doing this so I don't get it wasted because you wouldn't be able to use it if... Um, if you have these unmixed bits in there because they won't they won't harden it'll just be sticky and horrible so that's all mixed now now I'm just going to put the whole lot in there and then give it another little stir and just check make sure that there's no stringy particles floating around and there is not. Another thing that you can do that helps is you can put, um, um, you can get a, a cup of water, just maybe a little bit, half a cup of water, uh, warm water and just sit this in it. It does help for the bubbles to rise up to the top and it also helps to mix quicker. But that's um, usually when it's Pretty cold and you just want to get on with it and um, it's not that cold here today sun's coming out so it's working working good okay guys now that we've mixed our resin we've got about half an hour to 40 45 minutes sometimes to work so we'll get started I've only got a few colors here 
and I'm using Artisu liquid tinters and the epoxy pigment so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour some of this uh, resin into my cup first actually I want a fair bit of this particular one so I'm going to pour that one in here just a little bit of white and some of this stalo turquoise okay so here we go let's just see how many drops I'm gonna need I want it quite transparent so let's do one two three three drops <coughs> and get my stirrer Oh, that is so pretty. I'm going to put another. Yeah, it looks completely different. You see that difference? Because it's so concentrated. But it's quite transparent. Another two drops. Got to stir them really well, but gently. And actually, sometimes you can leave the unstirred um, parts in there because it does add um, to the character. Okay, that might be a little bit too... another two drops. So that's half a cup, so how many drops did I put in there? About five, seven? Okay, so I've got, I'm going to leave that unmixed. Don't know if you can see that, guys. You try and move that out of the way. Okay, but you'll be able to see it on the canvas. Okay, that's that one done. Um, tiny little bit of this fellow turquoise. I adore this one. Actually, ooh, just give me a second. I'm just going to grab another one because I don't want the aquamarine. I love aqua, aquamarine. That's another Artisu pigment. So I might just um, maybe just have a little bit of that one. Tiny little bit. So that's how much I put in. I just sort of dipped it in. That's good because this one is, I've only put a little bit so it's not as opaque. Just got to give it a bit of a better stirring. And I have my mask ready. I am in a process of, get, of getting a really good uh, respirator. So I would recommend that if you're going to be doing this um, regularly that you do get some something um, to protect yourself that was that was the phthalo turquoise now I'm gonna get some of this just a tiny little bit pop it in there these little shot glasses are really great stir that in it's similar to uh, my sea blue So stir that in. It's pretty, very similar. See the look of the difference. Very, very similar actually. Only this one is much, um, much deeper. The color, and I only put a tiny little bit because I want, I want it to be a little bit darker. Okay, and now I'm going to do my white. Just going to make sure I put the right lid. On the right container I'm pretty sure I've got a gold here somewhere yes just a very little bit so you've got to stir it 
this this gold is just absolutely amazing love it I'm only going to use it a little bit because I just want it for a bit of sparkle a bit of show that's all I'm going to need for that one and I'm going to not stir it in as much I just want it to have a bit of funk and the white again just a little bit because I tend to put too much white in there that a stir always scrape on the sides to get um, that pigment off or paint whatever you are using and then go all the way around the sides to pick it up scrape it off again pick it up again and that's how you get them mixed in nicely Alrighty, well I'm pretty excited about this one. Oh, I've got a little bit of amber. I might actually try to use that as well. And just a couple of drops of that. Just to, to see if I can create what I think. I want to create I'm not saying this time what I'm what I'm doing because <laughs> every time I do um, it turns into something else so I'm just gonna let this painting paint itself nicely and I'm just gonna be the instrument I'm just gonna um, let my hands be led by all these beautiful colors and tints and everything so oh that looks nice. Look at that. I'm going to put another drop in there. Give that a little bit of a swirly. So I haven't mixed that one in completely. I left it like that on purpose. Okay. Actually. I want to see what's going to happen if I put a little bit of this white in there. So I want to create a, like a beigey color. Let's see if I can do it if I put this white in there. Oh, okay. Look. That mixed in really beautifully. So I'm just going to put a tiny little bit more, another two drops of that white because I want that to be lighter so there you go completely different and this is a thing that you can do you know with pigments or paints or tints or inks whatever you're using you can just uh, keep adding um, different colors and mixing colors to create um, the color that you want you don't have to buy every single color you know well so okay so that's a bit too yellow for me so I just want to see how that worked and it worked really really well so oh cool I'm just going to put another couple of drops of these of this lovely amber and stir it in to make it look a bit darker there we go and I'm actually gonna leave those uh, swirly bits of of amber in there okay let's get started Bye. okay so I've got my mask on now and I'll probably start to sound a little bit funny um, but we're gonna get started now just want to add more of this um, maybe in here because I realize now that I'm going to need more of this color so here we go 
and you'll see now what I mean when I say I haven't mixed it in properly okay let's go I'm going to go sideways really doesn't help when the resin is um, running down the side of the cup can you see that it's two tone already what I'm doing now is just dragging this cup okay right that is done now get some of this one it's very transparent and that's what I wanted just wanted it to look like water and I also want it I'm going to bring it to the edge and if it starts falling down the edge then I'm gonna allow it to do that but at the moment I'm happy for it staying on top of the canvas there's a lot of bubbles there going through this one now creating a little bit of swirl let them merge into each other now and get a little bit more up here okay and get a little bit of this one just to see how we'll look here because this one is more uh, opaque even though I didn't mix I'm so sorry I didn't realize that I didn't put the press record again okay so, okay so I'm just going back here now I just put a couple of more drops of that uh, sea blue tinter and I'm so glad that I looked up the, at the camera and I saw that it wasn't recording that is terrible this has happened to me before because I just went to put my uh, my mask on and uh, press the button but obviously I didn't press it strong enough so I do apologize about that um, but it's all right you didn't miss too much now what I'm gonna do is okay so what I'm going to do now is just going to torch this, get the bubbles out. And <clears throat> just go around and dab these up to the edge. Just bring them right up. I can tilt and I probably will tilt. I'm just gonna go across with my my finger. There are a few grains of pigment that hasn't mixed, so I'm just gonna mix it right on the board. And just bring this one up to the edge. I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible. I know um, I tend to complicate things because um, I fiddle. I see things happening and I go ahead and change them. So, so what I'm doing now, I'm just dragging that paint from up there, kind of through here. And this one here looks like it might want to tip, so I'm just going to quickly pop a little something in there to lift it up a bit. You're constantly watching things. That's just how you have to work. Watching and observing. So I'm going to torch this again. I'm going to 
go ahead with my um, mix of colors here see what it looks like here okay doesn't look too bad like a bit of a sandy beach maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my stick to move this gently across here and as this amber is mixing in with the sea blue it's creating a really nice green which also associates with shall I kidding me I don't know why you guys but this has happened again I don't think it's my fault that time because I I know that it was recording so I don't know why it's stopping maybe my phone is getting full um, I don't even know when it stopped so I'm just adding some of that amber mix and um, I just made a joke saying that it's starting to look like what I intended it to look like a, a beach scene but knowing me it could even end up looking like a dragon or something like that you never never know I'm gonna leave a little bit of this in here because I might need it <coughs> I'm happy at the moment because it's leveled really well and it's not um, not leaking just yet I'm dragging some of that nice green across here and down here okay so what I'm going to pick up is some more of this one Just drag that as well. Okay. Now, that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to jazz it up a little bit with some gold. So we're just going to go across here with some of this gold. A little bit there down here a bit of that gold in the sandy bit it's a bit too yellow <coughs> so when the, the fun starts when you start to zhuzh things up and then start to move it with um, with the torch I've got a little bit of this clear left just a tiny little bit I'm just gonna use all of that up and just move it just down here and see if I can scrape up some of this and then oh I might make it okay that gold okay <clears throat> still got some of that just go all the way up to the edge Okay, back again. I had to go and delete some files from my my phone. So I have no idea now where it stopped. Um, I'm going to have to look over the whole thing and maybe do a commentary and explain what I'm doing. Because it, it could be just all over the place. 
Okay, so now that we've done that, oh yes, I was just moving, I'm just moving this paint, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around with my gold and just give it a little bit of, um, just a bit of accent, a bit of shine in the water, always looks nice. here a little bit it just breaks it up a bit that's gonna move it's not gonna stay like that it's absolutely normal <coughs> excuse me so I keep finding some of these little pigments that haven't mixed so what I'm doing is I'm really rubbing it into the canvas to break them up because you don't want you don't want those little dots sitting there so I'm not sure I don't think that's going to want to move guys so I'm going to have to just use my sharp tool and try and pull them out there you go lucky I don't have too many so I can just go ahead and do that Oop. That one actually is not moving, I've got it. Sometimes it's hard to, uh, to get it right when you're mixing. So what I should have done probably was to shake that bottle really well. That would have helped okay so that's all gone now we've got a couple of little ones that's all right okay so now that we've got that we've got to be real careful with my white i'm just going to put a little line across here and down here and then you guessed it I'm going to heat it up first a little bit. Ooh, I was lucky that didn't leak. What I can do is use my small torch. Break it up. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. I'm gonna get a little bit more down here. Not too much. Oop. Use my heat gun to break it up the rest a bit. that up a bit get my little torch well very easy to burn it but because it's still really wet it's not going to affect it too much okay so that's cool let's keep going maybe tiny little one here maybe a little bit bigger than that
Just gonna let it do its own thing there. Might go up here a little bit with the white. It's so cool because it sinks right in. Okay, and a little bit more white. Maybe up here. This could be our bigger wave like maybe it doesn't have to be symmetrical. So now you can tilt it whichever way you want and get that. So what I'm going to do now is, I quite like that, it's really interesting and it's going to keep moving which is good. I'm just going to go around now and just fix up some bits here with the white. Just creating these little lines. Just to give it something, something. There's a little drop there, I'm just actually going to leave it there because it looks like it belongs there. So now my white's getting a bit dirty and um, that's fine. Just a bit of finesse guys and not... Uh, oh, I managed to Keep it nice and clean, except for a couple of little escapees. And another one here. And uh, one here. Just got to wipe that off. Nice and clean. I've got a clean canvas. Okay. Alright, so happy with that. Happy with that. It's all mingling, it's all doing its own little dance on the canvas there. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a few more lines just across here. Just do, oh, no, 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 no. Lay on the canvas. Okay, getting a bit excited. So that's all I'm doing, just picking up some of this white, which is getting dirty, you see, but. It doesn't matter because I don't want it to be perfectly white now. Just creating a little bit of some interest in the water. Just so it doesn't, doesn't look too deliberate or too, you know. It's got to look like something. Now it's too much there now so I'm just going to blend that in. And then hit it with the torch and that'll fix that. Maybe a couple more here, like so. It's really cool because it sinks right in because um, this white is quite an opaque pigment and it sinks straight through and it creates this really awesome um, 3D effect. I know it looks like I'm filling a lot, but this is really easy stuff. You can do this. Yeah. People in my Facebook group, by the way, if you're not a member, you need to join us. The group is called Fluid Art, uh, 
uh, sorry, Fluid Art Community with Susanna Dex. That's my name. Um, there's a lot of people there who are very involved in the group and they help each other and I'm there every day uh, but it's just uh, wonderful to be part of this group so if you're not a member do join us find us on Facebook and just click that uh, join button and then you can display your art and show us what you do and Okay, so now um, I can see some bits that need to be pulled out. So I had a fair, fair bit of time to play with this one and I'm quite pleased with it actually. And you can see how easy it is. And you're not going to get it the same. You're never going to get it exactly the same. Um, but you will get a, something similar if you use this technique. So what I'm doing now, I'm just pulling these little white strings out. Um, maybe I put a little bit of white here. It's not even white anymore. That's alright, there's a bit of that uh, lovely sea blue there now, which is not a bad idea. Now I'm going to just go over it a little bit with, actually I need to fix that bit there. So I can scrape up some of this because it looks a little bit too pale. Now you can fiddle. Now you can just go around because it's still loose. The more you heat it with the, with the heat gun or the torch, you will loosen it up and get more working time but um, the more as well that you do heat it up the quicker it will set on you so you'll get that working time and then it'll start to set again so you can heat it up again and just fix bits that you need to fix and then it'll start setting quicker and quicker every time just how it works but I've been able to really stretch my working time with resin and even come back after a couple of hours and uh, fix things just by heating it up and then digging you know a hair or something like that out that I find in there because you'll save yourself having to do another coach you know and that Sometimes needs to be done, but if you can avoid it, then great because it's pretty expensive medium to to be um, wasting, you know. Okay, I still have a little bit of this gold left, and I was thinking maybe put some here. And then just maybe a little bit here, bit here, and then just a uh, torch.
Okay. So it's looking pretty cool now. Um, what I want to do is break up some of this gold. That's it. Don't want it too flat. Okay. I'm going to bring you down now and show you what we did. Okay, let's start from down here. See my edges are nice and clean, except for that. And I've got my alcohol wipe here, and that's going to come off really easy, see? So I'll do that as soon as I'm done with this. It just looks pretty cool sideways as well. So here we go. Let's go. Oh, this is really not picking up the colour. It's more of a aqua than this blue that it's showing us here which is a shame maybe if I go up higher no it's still not showing it bugger so there you have it how easy was that so I hope you liked it and I hope you join us in the group where you can you know um, connect with other people and uh, show some of your art as well. I'll see you again in another video. Bye for now.